Hey there guys and welcome to another FPV Guide video. Today we're going to be looking at some of the results that we've got yesterday when I was out test flying the DJI Phantom 4 Pro and I've also got to fly the DJI Inspire 2 Pro. Let me tell you right now, both of these two aircraft are taking the benchmark from being glorified flying security cameras to being absolutely more like flying DSLRs or micro four thirds cameras. Now the way we tested the resolution, as you can see in this picture here, we're flying the aircraft over the resolution target. And if you look right here, you can see that these two arrows are not completely, we have the black line in top, but none in the bottom. That's because the thickness of this black line is what is missing down the bottom here. So we were mostly looking not to get a perfect alignment, but to get the perfect scale so that the target here has the correct scale for this test. So here's the Inspire 2 Pro and this is the Phantom 4 Pro. And these two are virtually identical. And that honestly was a little bit of a surprise for me. After I found two great frames and did a frame grab on the 4K video, I'm of course using 4K video rather than a still shot because I wanna know what are you getting from this video that you're gonna be using for your productions. And so here, this is where it gets interesting. When we look at these lines and what we do is, we look here where the lines and we see how far we can still separate each one of the lines. When the line starts blurring out and no longer be individual lines but kind of become a gray tone, then we have found about the point, the last point where these lines can still be counted that is the maximum resolution of this camera. In this case here, we found this spot right about 1400 and 1400 here. So about 1400 lines of resolution to the Inspire 2 Pro camera. That is the X5S with the stock DJI Micro Four Thirds lens. Now keep in mind, we talked about that before. That lens is about a $300 lens and I'm gonna come right back to that in a second because this is where I got surprised when I started looking at the Phantom 4 Pro right here, what I found was, guess what? The resolution was almost identical and actually it's possible that the Phantom 4 Pro had a teeny bit better resolution than that lens. So you notice I keep saying that lens. Here's what I think is going on because I have no doubt that a camera that can shoot 5.2K video has incredible resolution. But I am wondering, we're now looking at cinema cameras that can shoot 5.2K resolution, and I'm not entirely sure if a $300 15mm lens truly is appropriate for this camera. It is plenty, and it looks fantastic. The images out of this camera is outstanding. But typical cinema lenses runs in the $2,500, $10,000, $20,000 range. So the question is, can a $300 lens truly get the most out of this camera? And I'm not sure about that. And I think what we have to do is come back to the camera with one of the very best lenses in the Micro Four Thirds market, the highest possible resolving lenses. And then, of course, that brings another question in because the Phantom 4 Pro it's just incredible sharp and it's focusable and it has a mechanical f-stop, brilliant. And it's a closed system. So that one is very easy to deal with. It's very sharp, it works great. But the interchangeable lens camera is a whole different ballgame because we can change lens. I mean, you can put a really crappy lens on there, right? And that's where it gets tricky because a great portrait lens is not necessarily super sharp. So the lenses we may want to use for a cinema job is not necessarily super sharp. What we are really looking for is that they have beautiful rendering and they may not resolve, say, 5.2K lines. And it's not important because the sensor still has the resolution so it can hold everything that comes from the lens. But still, I do want to come back to the Inspire 2 Pro with some really serious piece of glass and see if not we can tweak some more resolution out of it. That would kind of be interesting to know. So stay tuned for that test. Moving on to the density, you see where I'm going with this. Last week I started out with the six first cameras 
and I started getting density testing on all of these sensors and now we have added two more. So now on the website we have eight flying cameras and resolution test. Last week the two very best cameras was the Inspire X3 and the Autel X-Star. Both of those came in at about 9.3, 9.5 f-stop or dynamic range. Well, there was an exception because I also tested a Micro Four Thirds camera, my Panasonic GX8, and that one did about 11.5 f-stop of dynamic range. That's where we expected it to be. And we use that one both to see how much extra gradient do Micro Four Thirds get us, but also make sure that our test is right because the test should of course get the same numbers that other testers has gotten on the same cameras. So the two best flying cameras last week, including the old Inspire X3, was 9.3 f-stop dynamic range. This week we've gone completely nuts because the Phantom 4 Pro Yesterday, I tested that to be 11, I call it 11 plus, so a smidge more than 11 f-stops worth of dynamic range. Holy lenses, guys! That is a ton of dynamic range. So basically, you're now looking at a flying DSLR camera here. Very, very good results. Moving right up to the Inspire 2 Pro, which is the top line right here, we see that one also have in excess of 11 f-stops worth of dynamic range. You can see the little red lines over here in the left side. Now both of these cameras are capable of shooting raw and you should expect about one and a half f-stop of additional dynamic range if you shoot raw. Now the Phantom 4 Pro cannot shoot raw video simply because there's no way to stuff that much file. For every frame you need about 30 megabytes. There's no way to stuff that onto a micro SD card. But that's not so important because the standard compressed video from the Phantom 4 Pro has 11 f-stops of dynamic range. Guys, that is unbelievable range. Going back up to the Inspire 2 Pro, what we get is 11 f-stops worth of compressed to micro SD card dynamic range. However, if you shoot obscenely large files onto the SSD storage media, you can get about 12 and a half f-stops of dynamic range. Incredible dynamic range, guys, meaning you can pull a ton of details out of the shadows. Basically, if your nice Canon camera can take it, the shot in a DNG RAW, the Inspire 2 Pro can save video RAW with that quality. So there you have it, guys. That is everything for this video. We have tested the Phantom 4 Pro, 11 f-stops of dynamic range and 1400 lines of resolution. The Inspire 2 Pro, 11 f-stop of dynamic range for compressed video and 1400 lines of resolution. Super top of the line flying cameras. The numbers are adding up. Make sure you subscribe I'm also going to be adding the Inspire 2 with the X4S camera so we get the exact numbers on that camera and we'll take a closer look at the differences between the X4S and the X5S.